the topic for today is torsion. So again, let's have an introduction. So, so far, we've discussed shear stress, normal stress, mm -hmm. those two. And then now we're discussing a new type of stress, which is torsional stress. So before we get into the equations for torsional stress, let's just discuss a few of the assumptions made to make creating equations easier. So first of all, line AB deforms into the helix AB prime as the free and rotates through angle theta. So you have your bar AB, okay? And then it's attached on point A, and then it's free at point B. So when it rotates with this torque, right? The position of element B will move to B prime. Okay, so that's how it deforms. And then under that, cross sections do not deform, meaning planar strain is zero. So this cross section is not experiencing any deformation yet on the free end. And then length L of the shaft remains constant. Therefore, actual normal strain is zero. Since the total length is still the same, it's not experiencing actual stress. Therefore, there's no actual uh, so, Since again, it's has the same length, it's not experiencing actual deformation. Therefore, actual stress is zero. And then each cross section rotates as a rigid entity about the axis of the shaft. So meaning we can take an element or a segment of this length and we can analyze that and it would be the same for the entire length. So we did exactly that. We take a portion of our length. So we now have segment CD. Again, it came from this, okay? Specifically this part. And upon taking that, so consider a portion of the shaft here. As the shaft deforms, the two cross sections of the segment rotate about the x-axis. So on this end and on the back end, they're both rotating. And then the shear stress developed is G times D theta over DX times rho, where G is the modulus of rigidity of an object. Rho is the radius or the distance from the center to a point on the cross section. D theta is the angle of which your D deformed to D prime, and then DX is the width of your segment. Okay, so let's see how we got this equation. Okay, so once again, we have this figure. Now recall, we have an arc length here. Your d to d prime creates an arc. And the equation for the arc is arc theta. If you recall from your previous math subjects, s equals arc theta. So once again, s is the distance d to d prime and equals r theta, r r, our R for this segment is rho. So instead of R rho, and then our theta, angle subtending your arc is D theta. So rho D theta. And then in the same manner, this arc is also being subtended here on angle C. So therefore, again, following the concept of R theta, R is the radius for this portion. Okay. Um, and for this portion, This is your R, which is gamma, or gamma, and then our theta is this. Oh, sorry, our R is dx rather, and then our angle is gamma. So dx times gamma. That's your R theta. And then using these two equations, isolating gamma. Gamma is d theta over dx times rho, and that gamma is a deformation along the span of your or along the segment. And then recall from your general Hooke's law, shear stress is gamma times g. Therefore, substituting gamma here, you'll get shear stress is now g, and then this equation d theta over dx times rho. Okay, so that's how we derive that equation. 
So D theta over Dx is also known as the angle of twist per unit length. And then shear stress varies linearly with the radial distance to rho from the axis of the shaft. Again, rho distance from the center or axis of your shaft. So this is the diagram of your shear stress. Again, here at the center, shear stress is zero. And then as you get farther along, it increases. Therefore, maximum shear stress at the surface, or there is maximum shear stress at the surface of your shaft. Okay, next. Considering equilibrium. So for the shaft to be in equilibrium, the resultant shear stress acting on a cross section must be equal to the internal torque T acting on that cross, -sex cross section. So that means shear stress will be related to torque. So the equation there is torque equals rho, uh, integral of rho shear stress dA. And then we also have polar moment of inertia. It's a measure of a beam's ability to resist torsion. Remember from your physics class, polar moment of inertia is also equal to integral of rho squared dA. And then finally, angle of twist. It's the rotation of the cross section of the free end of the shaft. So that is PL over JG. So for example, angle of twist is by how much the free end rotated. So that's also equal to the angle between B to B prime. Okay. So let's derive again these equations. Okay. So first, we have shear. Now, shear stress, as you can see, varies linearly. So therefore, it's not uniform, meaning I can't just use shear stress equals V over A. Instead, I'm going to take a very small segment. And then from that, we can say shear stress is differential shear force over differential area. This is not volume, OK? That's shear force. Okay, And then isolating differential shear force, we get dV or differential V equals shear stress times dA. And then remember, shear stress is G d theta over dx times rho, and then you have your dA. So for now, let's call that equation number one. Next, let's use your polar moment of, uh, let's use the equation for torque. Okay. So torque is your force, right? If you remember the basic equation for torque. Okay, so bear with me, I don't have my stylus. I'm just using a mouse. So torque is radius times force. Force being what's causing your rotation, R being the distance between the point of application and the axis. So in terms of a shaft, a rotating shaft, okay, your R now is rho. So that's the distance from the axis at the center of your shaft. And then the force causing rotation is shear force. That's why this is rho dV. And again, we're only considering a small area. That's why it's dV, rho dV. And then to solve for that, we integrate. So T equals integral of rho dV. And then dV is also equal to shear stress times dA. So remember, shear stress, and here, dV over dA, and dV is just shear stress dA. Okay. And then finally, we'll sub in this equation for shear stress dA. So you'll get T equals integral of rho j d theta over dx rho dA. Okay. And then we have rho and rho here. So simplifying T equals integral of g d theta dx times rho squared dA. So once again, Let's leave that for now. And then recall, polar moment of inertia is integral of rho squared dA. So I can just sub that here. So now the equation is T G d theta over dx times J. Okay, Because we can rewrite this as modulus of rigidity is constant, right? So we have G. 
and then raw squared as well. And then we're integrating And then let's factor out d theta and dx as well. That is not what we're integrating. And then we're left with integral of rho squared dA. So this is going to become g d theta dx and rho squared dA is just j. So this will become j. That's how this came to be. Okay. And then. Simplifying further, to remove this differential, we're going to isolate d theta, okay? And then you're going to have p dx over jg. Again, integrate both sides. Integral of d theta is just theta. Integral of p dx over jg from 0 to L. So torque is constant. Jg is constant as well. So we're left with integral of dx from 0 to L. Integral of dx. What's the integral of dx? Does anyone remember? Integral calculus. What's the integral of dx? Anyone? No? Integral of x dx is x squared over 2. What about just integral of dx? Correct, Sierra. Gutierrez. Um, and then... Else. Dx only, so correct refuerzo. Okay, so it fits. So therefore, this is x. Evaluate from 0 to L. And then that's just going to become L minus 0. And that's just L. That's why this becomes T times L over JG. So theta is TL over JG. Okay? That's how that came to be. So still remember your integral calculus. This is where it's applied. Okay, next. Next, we have more equations. So these are the equations that we'll use in problem solving most of the time. So shear stress is just T times rho over J, while maximum shear stress is TR over J. Because remember, max, maximum shear stress happens at the surface. Distance from center to surface is radius R. Okay? And then for a solid shaft, the polar moment of inertia is 5D to the fourth over 32. And then getting the maximum shear stress for a solid shaft is 16t over pi d cubed. Okay, so that's just subbing this equation here. And then for a hollow shaft, it's almost the same, but instead of d raised to 4, it's d raised to 4 minus small d raised to 4. So outer diameter minus inner diameter, same thing here for maximum shear stress. Outer diameter raised to 4 minus inner diameter raised to 4. And as usual, let's try to derive that equation. Okay. So first, let, uh, let, let's recall the equations that we have so far. So we have this, shear stress, g, d, theta, dx, rho. And then we also have this. And P torque is G D theta D X times J. So using those two equations, combining them and combining them, 
will get rho equals t rho over j. So that's it. That's how this equation came to be. Again, maximum because it's radius. Next. Now, again, polar moment of inertia is integral of r squared dA, where r is distance from your center. That distance can also be resolved into x component and y component. So that's just x squared plus y squared. Da. And then you can separate. You'll get integral of x squared dA and integral of y squared dA. And then again, recalling from your past physics classes, integral of x squared dA is just moment of inertia about the x-axis. Integral of y squared dA is moment of inertia about the y-axis. And then for a solid shaft, right, Ix equals Iy. And that is equal to pi d to the fourth over 64, your moment of inertia table for uh, rigid bodies. So we have a solid shaft there. And then polar, polar moment of inertia, again, is Ix plus Iy. So it's just pi d to the fourth over 64 times 2. And that's how you got pi d to the fourth over 32. And then next. How do we get maximum shear? Stress. So that's T rho over J. Again, rho being your radius. Radius is also equal to diameter over 2. So sub that here and then sub J here. And then simplifying, you'll get 16P times pi dQ. Okay? And then next. That's how we derive the equations. And then next, the final equations that we have is power transmission. So one common application of shafts is to transmit power. So the equation for the torque is P over 2 pi F, or P, the power, is equal to torque over 2 pi F, where F is your frequency. Once again, how did we get that? So remember, the basic equation for power is work over time, where work is force times distance. So force distance over time. Distance over time is velocity. So power equals force times velocity. So this is for linear action. Since we're dealing with torsion, we want rotational or angular movement. So the variables analogous to F and V that are angular are the following. So for force, the angular equivalent would be torque, right? And then for linear velocity, the angular counterpart is angular velocity. So velocity, angular velocity, force, torque, okay? And then angular velocity has the equation 2 pi F. Right. Therefore, T is just P over 2 pi F. And that's it. Do you have any questions so far? Please answer in the chat. Okay, since you don't have questions, we can move on to our examples. So let's begin. Example number one. The figure shows a two-diameter solid steel cylinder that is built into the support at C and subjected to torques TA and TB. Letter A, determine the maximum shear stress in segments AB and BC of the cylinder. And then letter B, compute the angle of rotation of end A. Use G is 12 times 10 raised to 6 PSI for steel. So the solution for this is kind of similar to what we have for normal stresses. So for normal stress, right, we had a bar and then applied forces on it. And then to get the maximum shear stress in each segment, we solve for the internal force in each segment and then divided it by their cross-sectional area. So that's the same uh, steps here. So first, we need to find the internal torque for each segment, and then we're going to use that to compute for the maximum shear stress. So we're not going to use shear force over uh, rotational force or torque over area. Okay, that does not exist. 
the stress for torque is not torque over area. Okay, we have an equation for that which we showed earlier, and that is P rho over J or PR over J for maximum, or 16T over pi d cubed for a solid shaft. Okay, so keep that in mind. It's different for torques. Okay, so first we need to find the internal torques, right? So First step, let's write the given. G is 12 times 10 raised to 6. And then diameter is 2 inches. So this is your support at C. Right? And then these are your rotation. So I'm going to introduce to you a new sign convention using the right-hand rule. Okay? It's kind of hard to make you visualize. But but basically, try to do this with me. Okay, get your right hand. Okay, and then follow this movement. So your fingers will follow the direction of your torque. So if you're doing it correctly, your fingers should point towards you, and then extend your thumb out. If your thumb is pointing away from the segment, we call that positive. Okay, for torque, final sign for torque. But uh, if your thumb is going towards the segment, that's negative. Okay? And also, this thumb dictates the direction or vector form of your torque. Okay? Because that is what we're going to do to make things clearer. So once again, let's try. Uh -huh. So let's see here. This is your A. So let's draw it that way. Okay, just so to make things clear. So this is counterclockwise, right? So it's going. And then I'm delete this so you can see. Yeah. Okay. So as you can see, if you do the right hand rule, right, curl your fingers in the direction of this, your thumb should point to the right. So that's why this green arrow is to the right. Okay. And then in the same way, and your TB is towards the paper. And then if you curl your fingers that way as well your thumb will point to the left. So it's curling towards this, okay? I'm not gonna change the drawing anymore. Yeah. And then your green arrows to the left. And then you're gonna assume direction for your reaction. So torque, reaction of torque at this support. So I'm assuming it's this way, okay? It's curling towards, okay? And then since you're doing that, your thumb will point to the left, so this to the left. And then just follow the sign convention of your arrows to the right positive to the left negative. You'll get negative P minus 400 plus 900 equals zero. Then P is 500. Okay, positive, therefore correct assumption. Okay. And then correct assumption, therefore, your arrow is away from your support. So this is positive. Okay. So then on. So a bit, a bit of a lot of sign conventions. Now, after you've solved for reaction, you can divide segments. So again, we're concerned with segment A, B, and A, and B, C. So divide here, or cut here, and cut here. So I cut here first and isolate the left side. You'll get this image. Once again, this is what we have. Okay. Using right-hand rule again, you'll see that the vector for torque is to the left. And then you're going to guess the direction of your internal torque VC. Okay, so I assumed, once again, uh, how will I draw this? 
I assume that since this is towards the paper, I'm assuming the torque here is away from the paper. So going away. Okay. And then let's do this. And Okay, and then curl your fingers again towards the paper, uh, towards you. Your right thumb should point to the right. That's why this is to the right. Okay. And then summation of moment equals zero since this is rotational forces. So to the left again negative, to the right negative, a uh, positive. So you'll get negative five hundred because that's the value of your t. Negative five hundred plus TBC equals zero, so TBC is 500, positive. Therefore, correct assumption, we assume that it's this way, and then our arrow is pointing away from your segment, therefore positive. Okay. Then do the same for segment AB. So segment AB, again, we have this force, right? It's going towards you. Again, let's try to draw that. Going towards us. Okay. All right. And then again, try to curl your fingers this way. Your right thumb will point to the right. And then assume direction for internal reaction or internal torque on this end. So internal torque and AB. I'm gonna I'm gonna assume it's towards the paper. So curl your fingers towards the paper. Your Right thumb will point to the left. So that's why your green arrow is to the left. Again, take summation of moment. So negative TAB plus 900 equals zero. Therefore, TAB equals 900. Positive, therefore, correct assumption. It's away from your segment. Therefore, positive. Okay. So now you have two positive torques in each segment. Therefore, your stress will also be positive. So let's do that. Again, the goal here is to solve for stress. By the way, take uh, keep in mind your units. Our forces are in pounds. The, the distances are in feet. So for example, also here, look, our value for torque is pound foot. So just keep that in mind. That's why this is also pound foot. Okay, now the equation for maximum stress is again 16 T over pi d cubed for solid shafts. So this is just a matter of direct sub. So 16 times T, so maximum stress at B is 500. This is in feet, convert that to inches. So one foot equals 12 inch. That's why we have this here. And over pi D cube, and diameter is given to be two inches. So two cube. And solving for shear stress BC, you get 3,819.72 PSI. Do the same for segment AB. Again, it's 16 P over pi D cube, 16. Your torque is 900. Again, that's in feet, convert to inches, so times 12 over pi, diameter is two, and then cube. Solving for shear stress, you'll get 6,875.49, and our unit is PSI, okay? Because our units are now in pounds and inches. Okay, next. Uh, Part B. Part B, compute the angle of rotation of end A. Use G as 12 times 10 raised to 6 PSI for steel. Okay. So we have an equation for theta, right? That's TL over JG. Since we have more than one torque, okay, 
right? Our segments will rotate differently. There's a different rotation for part A. There's also a different rotation for part B. So we're just taking the summation of everything. Okay. So first, let's start with AB. So TAB, LAB over JG plus TBC, LBC over JG. So just do this for all of the segments. So there's only two, so there's only two there. Next, sub in your values. Keep in mind the sign, okay? So TAB and TBC are both positive because that dictates if your segments are rotating in the same way. Okay? That's why sign is important here. They're both positive. So just write positive 900, length, Oh, sorry, positive 900. Again, that's pound foot. We need to convert that to inches. That's why there's a 12 here. And then length. Let's see. Length of segment AB is 5 feet, and then BC is 3. So again, AB is 5 feet. Convert to inches, so times 12. Next, PBC, 500 pound foot. So 500 times 12 to convert to inches. And then length of BC is 3 feet convert to inches times 12. Then over JG, J is just pi D to the fourth over 32. Again, D is 2 inches. And then G is 12 times 10 raised to 6 PSI. So everything now is uniform units. You can solve. When you solve for this, you'll get this answer, 0 0.05. But for angle of twist, you want it to be in degrees. So convert radians to degrees. That's just 180 over pi. And then final answer is 2.63 degrees. Okay, and that's it for number one. Any questions for number one? Please answer in the chat again. How about the others? Please answer as well. Okay, great. Next, let's have number two. Okay. The shaft in the figure consists of a three inch diameter aluminum segment that is rigidly joined to a two inch diameter steel segment. So aluminum attached to steel. The ends of the shafts are attached to rigid supports. Calculate the maximum shear stress developed in each segment when the torque P equals 10 kip inch is applied. So kip again is just 1000 pounds. Use G equals four times 10 raised to six and alumin for aluminum and G is 12 times 10 raised to six PSI for steel. So first step, right, you're given. So first, diameter of aluminum, 3 inches. For steel, 2 inches. And then torque applied is 10 kip inch. And then modulus of rigidity for aluminum, 4 times 10 raised to 6 PSI. And then for steel, 12 times 10 raised to 6 PSI. Now take note, both ends are attached to rigid supports, right? So meaning there's going to be a reaction here and a reaction here. So let's just uh, specify. So looking at the drawing, okay, this is the way your torque is rotating. So like that. So meaning curl your fingers here, right? And then your thumb will be directed that way. That's why this is your arrow. And then since reactions will prevent that motion, I assume that reactions at both ends are the opposite of that. So they're gonna be towards the paper or towards your screen. So towards, I then draw your hand, your thumb will be to the left here. Same thing here. Again, fingers this way, your thumb will be here. So to the left and to the left. Okay, so let me ask you guys, 
can I isolate, uh, cut isolate each segment in order to get the internal forces or internal torques like what I did in problem number one? Yes or no? Again, the question is, can I cut isolate like what I did in problem one to get the internal torques in each segment? Yes or no? Please answer in the chat. about the others again can i cut and isolate and will i be able to get an answer for the internal force or internal torque if i do that yes or no Just type your answer in the chat yes or no Okay, so to give you the answer, let's try it. If I cut here and isolate, right, this is your TAL. And then here is your internal force for the aluminum or internal reaction for the aluminum. I don't know TAL though. So I can't know this internal torque yet. So the answer is no, okay? You first need to figure out what TAL and TS, TST are. So reaction at aluminum end and reaction at steel end. And we can't do what we did earlier, which was just doing moment and we're able to get the reaction as like uh, as shown here because we have two reactions. So meaning there's gonna be two unknowns. So correct for those who answered no, Trinity and Nina, so Flores and Nabo. Answer is no. Okay, so what we're going to do first is get an equation. So summation of moment equals zero. Again, this is to the left, so negative TAL, positive P minus TST equals zero. You'll get an equation TAL plus TST equals P. And P is 10 kip inch. Again, kip is 1,000 pounds, so that's why this is 10 times 10 raised to 3. Okay, so 10 convert to pounds. Now, what else? Since I have this, right, I need another equation. And to get another equation, you're going to observe how your shaft will move. Okay. So since these are both attached to rigid supports and this is going to twist, we can say that the whole shaft will twist the same way or twist the same amount, right? The aluminum side will twist in the same amount as the steel side. Okay. Because again, they're attached. So they're confined by this, uh, they're confined to whatever movement of applied torque is. So sigma A, uh, theta AL is equal to theta ST. And then from this, we can create another equation. Now recall equation for theta is TL over JG. So we have TL over JG of aluminum equals TL over JG of steel. T is the internal force in that segment, so TAL. Length of aluminum is six feet. Again, everything in pounds and inches here. So convert to inches times 12 and JG. Okay, so pi, diameter of aluminum is three inches. So pi three to the fourth over 32. And then G of aluminum is four times 10 raised to six. Again, same thing for the steel side. So T is internal torque, TST. Length is three feet times 12 for inches over pi D to the fourth diameter. Of the steel shaft is 2. Okay, so 2 to the 4th over 32, and then 
modulus of rigidity is 12 times 10 raised to 6. So now you have two equations, two unknowns. Okay. And then from this, you can solve for PAL and PST. And then you'll get internal force for aluminum is 4,576.27. Unit is pound inch. And internal force for steel is 5,423.73. Unit again is pound inch. And so now we have internal forces. What are we looking for again? Shear stress. Therefore, we're going to use equation for your shear stress. Okay. So first, again, let's do that. So shear stress for the aluminum side. Again, this is still a shaft, so that's a solid shaft. So the equation for maximum shear is 16T over pi D cubed. Okay. So 16T, 16 TAL, so for 4,000 over pi times diameter, which is 3 cubed. Please compute what's the answer. Correct, Audrey. Wells. Correct, Nina. So Florence. Okay. So the answer is 863.21 PSI, since again everything is in pounds and inches. And then do the same thing for steel. 16T over pi D cubed, so 16 times internal torque for steel. And then diameter for steel is 2. And then solving for that, you get 3,452.85. And that's it for problem number 2. Any questions for number 2, please answer in the chat. Okay, since you don't have questions, let's have problem number three. Okay. So number three, the four rigid gears loaded as shown in the figure are attached to a two-inch diameter steel shaft. Compute the angle of rotation of gear A relative to gear D, and then use G equals 12 times 10 raised to 6 PSI for the shaft. Okay, so... Technically, these gears are just what provides your torque. So we don't care about the dimension of your gears. Okay? What's experiencing stress is still just this steel shaft. Okay? So don't mind the torque that just uh, don't mind the gears. They just provide the torque. So you can ignore them and just focus on the arrow and the value. So for number three, we're not looking for maximum shear stress. We're looking for angle of rotation. Of gear relative of a of gear a relative to gear d so rotation of a relative to d so that means we need to compute how all of the segments in between will rotate remember the equation for angle of rotation is pl over jg so that means i still need to solve for the internal torque in each segment so let's start with that internal torque for each segment so given diameter of steel shaft 2 inch, G is 12 times 10 raised to 6. Okay. So first, since this, this isn't attached to any rigid support, I can cut isolate. Okay. So I'm going to isolate A first. So cut here. You'll have something like this. And then this is how it was rotated. So again, uh, Try to visualize, okay? So rotate, this rotation is towards you or away from the paper. So rotate your fingers towards you. You'll see that your right thumb will point to the right. And then reaction, you're gonna guess or assume direction. I'm gonna assume, right? Since 
this is towards me. I'm going to assume reaction is towards the paper or away from me. And then again, curl your fingers that way towards the direction. Your thumb will point to the left. And as you can see there. And then from that, you can solve for TAB using summation of moment equals zero. So negative TAB plus 500 equals zero. Therefore, TAB equals 500. Positive, therefore, correct assumption. Therefore, this is, toward, uh, this is away from your segment. So this is positive. Okay. And then unit is pound foot. So take note again, this is in feet. Next, let's isolate here at segment CB and isolate the right side. So CB, isolating the right side. Again, you already know this. We have another applied torque for 900 pound foot towards the paper. So this is towards the paper, right? Again, so draw your hand. This is your thumb. It's to the left, so this is to the left. And then assume direction for your reaction. So I'm going to assume okay, it's towards me. So towards me, this is your thumb. Uh, this is your fingers, this is your thumb. And so your arrow is to the right. Okay. Again, for reactions, these are assumptions for direction. And then you're going to check, are you correct or not? Next, summation of moment equals zero. So TBC to the right, so positive, minus 900 plus 500 equals zero. You'll get TBC equals positive 400. Positive, therefore correct direction. It's towards your segment. Therefore, that's negative. Okay? And then pound foot. And then lastly, you can either, uh, we can cut here to get internal torque in CV. You can isolate either the left or the backward or forward side. I isolated the forward side. Once again, your torques. So we already know the 900 and 500, right? Next, we have a 1,000 pound. It's going towards you. So I'll draw that as towards me. And again, these are your fingers. Your thumb will point that way. To the right. And then assume direction for internal torque in CD. I'm going to assume it's towards the paper again. So again, draw your hand. That's your fingers. Your thumb will be this way. So to the left. Those are your directions. Next summation of moment equals zero. So negative PCD plus 1,000 minus 900 plus 500 equals zero. You're going to get PCD equals positive 600, therefore correct. This is away from your segment, therefore positive. Okay, so now you have the internal torque for each segment. So to get the total angle of twist from A to D, it's just summation of TL over JG for each segment involved. So TAB, LAB. Since they're all the same segments, JG are the same. I mean, they're all they're the same material. JG is the same, okay? So TAB, LAB, plus TBC, LBC, plus TCB, LCB. Now let's sub in our values. TAB is positive 500. Again, this is in feet. So times 12 to convert to pounds, uh, to convert to inches. And then length of segment AB, it's 5 feet. So 5 times 12, again, to convert to inches. Next, TBC is negative 400. So include your sign there, negative 400. This is in feet, so convert times 12. Let's see length of BC. That's three feet. So three, again, times 12 to convert to inch. And then finally, segment CD has an internal torque of 600. Pound foot, convert to inches times 12. Let's see length of CD. It's four feet. So four, again, times 12 to convert to inches. And then over J, J is pi D to the fourth over 32, D being two inches. And then G is just 12 times 10 raised to 6. Solving for that, you'll get 0 0.03 radians. Again, for angle of twist, the final answer should be in theta. So times 180 over pi to convert radians to theta, your answer is 1.62 degrees. Okay? So that is number three. Any questions for number three? Please answer in the chat.
okay, no questions. Let's look at the next problem. Mm -hmm. The figure shows a steel shaft of length L equals 1.5 meters and diameter is 25 millimeters. That carries a distributed torque of intensity, which is torque per unit length, of Pb times x over L. For Pb is 200 newton meter per meter. And then determine first letter A, the maximum shear stress in the shaft, and B, the angle of twist of the shaft. Use G equals 80 GPA. So for, again, we're looking for maximum shear and angle of twist of your shaft. Now the problem here is we're not given an applied torque. We're given a torque intensity. And then the torque is equal to Tb times x over L. So to show you the solution of this, it involves integral calculus. Okay. So this is a bit more compl complicated than the past examples. And I don't want to just show it to you. I want to solve it with you so that you can absorb it better. So I'm going to leave problem number four for next meeting. Okay. And same with problem number or the following problems. Because okay? again, I don't want to just show you the solution. I want you guys to solve with me. But in case you're wondering, that's how the solution is. So that means this is the end for the lecture for today. We ended a bit early because, again, the solutions are already written out. If this was uh, our normal meeting, I would have been writing everything. So that's why we're, we're, we're a bit faster than usual. Okay, so hopefully next meeting, my tablet is okay. So on Saturday, you'll have your seat work number three your final seat work, and then I'll resume lecture next week, Tuesday. And then a few other things. I'll upload your IP exam later around midnight because I still have to add your recitation points. So for those who got an IP, again, just answer your IP exam. Same instructions as for IP exam number one. And then for those who still got an I or IP in your module one, even when you perfect or got a perfect score for IP exam one, sad to say, you're still IP. That's because your prior scores were still too low or not high enough to get you to pass. Okay, so when your final grade is still I or IP, that just means you have to enroll in a completion module next term, which should be free. And then you're just gonna complete the requirements for the modules that you had a grade of I or IP in. Okay, so do you have any more questions or concerns, clarifications? Okay, so again, uh, apologies, our Zoom meeting today isn't as interactive as the past meetings. Hopefully, again, for our next Zoom meeting, my tablet is fixed so we can go back to how it was. Okay, so no Zoom meeting on Saturday since it's just seat work. So I'll see you on Tuesday. Since you don't have any more questions, you may go. Bye, class. Ma'am? Yes? May I ask if magko-convert na po yung I, yung I grade to uh, number po kung 70 na po yung, 72 na po yung percentage for MG1 IP students? Yes, if you got 72 for MG1 IP students, that's already three. I just have to manually change your M1 grade. That's why it's not reflecting okay. yet. Thank you po. Okay, no problem.